Vlog 1. Skills and capacities in the weight room. Back squat capacity. So let's take a look at the back squat exercise. And this is a capacity deficiency. So this athlete is just back squatting with a 20 kg bar. And it's a high bar back squat. And it's clear to see some movement restrictions uh, with the athlete unable to achieve desired range in regards to depth and possessing unfavourable degrees of trunk forward lean. And the higher loads the athlete is actually able to get a little bit deeper due to compression forces. It was then proceeded to investigate the ankle range of motion in isolation via the method of dorsiflexion lunge wall test with the athlete displaying severe dorsiflexion restrictions. With previous research by Hodge and McKeon 2011 suggesting that the adequate range for healthy adults is between 10 and 13 centimetres and as displayed this athlete had difficulties achieving one centimetre. By elevating the heels we can see a greater degree of knee translation and a more upright torso both body weight and with external load. Some controversial research by Lee et al. suggesting that heel raise foot posture doesn't affect the biomechanics of the back squat. However, this is only the case with individuals who already possess high degrees of ankle dorsiflexion anyway. So it's fair to say that ankle mobility is in fact the issue um, regarding the biomechanics of this squat technique. Squatting with low levels of ankle dorsiflexion prevents the knees from anteriorly translating forwards. Therefore, the hips have to travel further back in order to achieve some sort of depth, simultaneously moving the torso anteriorly in order to keep the centre of mass over the base of support. This example of a plate squat is a good demonstration of where balance is maintained uh, due to weight distribution. It could be a good progressing balancing technique. By decreasing load over time. The next few clips illustrate the selected corrective exercises utilised to improve ankle dorsiflexion range of motion, which will in turn aid in enhanced squatting biomechanics. A recent uh, research by Gillett et al. 2019 um, suggests that foam rolling and resistance band uh, joint distraction for a period of five, and five to seven weeks improved ankle mobility, including dorsiflexion. Furthermore, Zao et al. 2017 states those with um, high um, ankle arches tend to have less ankle mobility and stiffer ankles, which uh, presents to be the case with this athlete. So arguably, it would make sense to dedicate some attention to the foot complex by implementing mobility and myofascial release strategies. Improving ankle mobility could have a, a positive effect on various sporting functional movement patterns. Athlete adopts an alternative compensating strategy by adjusting the feet into a wider stance, making this a more hip dominant movement as opposed to knee dominant. In the meantime, the athlete could start to implement other exercises in order to continue to train the muscle groups, which are likewise involved in the squat movement. Military press capacity. In this exercise, the athlete is performing a military press exercise with a 20 kg barbell. And it's noticeable that the athlete is utilising a thoracic extension compensating strategy in order to press directly above head. This sometimes occurs if the athlete is not strong enough to press the bar above head and therefore utilises the pectoral muscles to, to assist with that movement. In this next clip we can see the athlete performing a shoulder flexion movement in a sagittal plane. And it's clear that the range of movement is very limited, thus suggesting that this is in fact a mobility issue. There also seems to be a slight asymmetry where the right arm possesses greater range of motion than the left one. It's also clear that the athlete can't quite extend the elbows, potentially due to bicep tightness. Movement restriction can be explained by tight latissimus dorsi muscles, so it makes sense to try and improve their flexibility. When in combination with tight pectoral muscles, trapezius muscles and weak upper posterior muscles. We often see this rounding of the shoulders in static posture. You can see by this exercise the athlete is uh, struggling with external rotation um, of the shoulder but is actually comfortable in the internal rotation. Again this is due to the anterior muscles being stronger than the posterior muscles and the pecs being tight. When observing a uh, posterior static posture of the athlete, we can clearly see that the shoulders are internally rotated because you can see the palms of the hands pointing towards the posterior side of the body. 
So here we can see the athlete uh, performing a laying prone T exercise and also Y exercise to strengthen the muscle groups responsible for that scapular retraction in external rotation. Meantime, an alternative exercise for the athlete to perform and still continue to improve their um, overhead strength for landmine overhead press. This is a better option because it enables the athlete to still press above head without having to place sheer forces on the lumbar and thoracic spine. Deadlift skill. So here we can see the athlete performing a deadlift. This athlete has performed deadlifts before but possesses poor technical knowledge. Some of the technical errors identified in this movement include the movement being initiated by lifting the hips. And so in this clip we can see the coach instructing the athlete with some external cues including imagining that he is being lifted from a rope being attached right from the top of his head. It was also evident that the athlete possesses slight lumbar flexion and so here we can see the coach attempting to get the athlete into a more optimal position by instructing the three points of contact which are the top of the head, the upper back and the sacrum and although close the athlete was not able to achieve this. So in able to identify whether it's a capacity issue or a motor control and neuromuscular issue, the coach got the athlete to perform a cat camel exercise. And right away it was clear that the athlete actually had the capacity to perform this movement with thoracic extension and flexion being present in isolation. The athlete then performed the same sort of movement but within the lumbar region to assess not only thoracic but lumbar control and mobility and got the athlete to move on to a different exercise where the athlete was instructed to stand around 25 centimeters away from the wall and was instructed to maintain the cat uh, posture and push the hips back and touch the bum at the highest point in the wall whilst maintaining isometric spinal control in that extended position. He then applied that new skill into a rack pull exercise it's seen on the top right hand side of the screen. Kinesiology tape was applied to the athlete attaching from the upper glutes all the way into the thoracic region and this provided the athlete with an external cue of being able to identify when spinal flexion was occurring by feeling the stretch of the tape pulling and as it's seen the athlete was able to maintain a much neutral position although there are clearly some improvements that need to be made regarding the technical aspect of the lift for example leaving a better hinge pattern by allowing the shoulders to go over the bar a little bit more back squat skill moving on to the squat skill it's clear that this athlete was initiating the squat movement with his knees previous research suggests that Initiating the movement like this creates a necessary shoe pressure at the knee and transfers the center of pressure towards the front part of the foot, which in some cases can even cause the heel to rise, occurring in loss of balance, which could in turn lead to injury. In this clip, we can see the coach cueing the athlete into appropriate knee and hip flexion timings. We can see another strategy utilizing the dowel, instructing the athlete not to touch the knee onto the dowel, forcing him to limit knee flexion and adopt a hip flexion strategy. Next clip we can now see the athlete performing the correct movement pattern under loaded conditions and although the timing was fixed another issue was then presented. If you look closely you can see a slight posterior pelvic tilt at the bottom of the movement. I introduced a box squat at the height where the tilt occurs so that the athlete is able to identify when this is occurring whilst also continuing to practice the movement and getting stronger at it. The athlete also had the elbows posteriorly flared, which caused internal rotation at the shoulder and could in turn increase spinal flexion. In this clip, we can see that the athlete is correcting the elbow angle and wrist positioning into a more flexed, stable position. He also adjusted foot width into a slightly wider position, which aided in a deeper squat and somewhat delayed the posterior pelvic tilt. In addition to this, and similar to the strategy used in the deadlift exercise, the use of the kinesiology tape was also implemented to allow the athlete to realize the point of which he was beginning to flex at the lumbar region. Although there's still room for improvement, the athlete has acquired the skill to perform the movement of a back squat more effectively 